It's Double T, and joining me from the Ghost Hunter Dan Norvell Project, it is Dan Norvell. How you doing this morning? Hey, how are you? I'm good. So Larry's out sick today. He's usually joins Larry us also. Larry is sick. We don't want him near us. No. People are starting to get these colds and stuff already. Yeah, I, I told him, I said, you don't need to be making us sick, so just stay home. No kidding. <laughs> in the world, and that, make, that, that poses an interesting question, in the world of paranormal and ghost hunting and that does the weather affect things uh it can uh we've been out uh just after an electrical storm which it seems to charge the the environment okay um we've actually been out uh when there's an electrical storm you know brewing on the horizon and that seems to kick up activity uh there's different theories why it does that um I would just say there's so much energy right. you know, from the being generated from the storm. It's pulling the energy from it. That that would make mind. sense. What about temperature? Does the temperature affect? Um, we have caught just as much stuff if it's below zero as we have at 85 degrees. Okay. Um, I mean, of course, temperature can cause different issues because I don't know how many pictures I've seen over the internet uh, with new teams, and I'm sure we had a few too when we were brand new at this uh when you're taking a picture and you exhale and oh uh, yeah catch dismissed and oh my god it's a good no it's your breath <laughs> <laughs> or if it's really cold and you leave your car running and you oh my god what's this brownish haze it's right. your car exhaust yeah <laughs> you know it's but, little things that can affect things though it's, yes it's it's interesting you don't think about it so where are we headed this week last week we talked about uh stillman hill Right. Uh, this week we're going to talk about uh, Camp Grant, and uh, we investigated the command post that is still there. It's it is one of the original parts of the mess hall for Camp Grant. And what area of Rockford is that? Uh, Camp Grant used to sit where the Rockford Airport presently is now. Okay. So uh, during World War One, if you were a soldier going across seas to fight, you were going to cycle through Camp Grant. See? That's interesting. Yes. Now, one of the one of the things, and, and we're going to make that tie in when we talk about Tinker, um, but there was a big Spanish flu outbreak at Camp Grant, and I believe it was between 20 and 30,000 soldiers died at Camp Grant. They never even... Got to go to war. They died right there from the Spanish flu. Oh, wow. That's awful. Mm hmm So there's got to be a lot of activity going on around yeah, there. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of weird stuff that goes on out there. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, the fire station that's just across the street from the command post. Okay. I had always heard different people talk that that was supposedly haunted. I don't know. I've never been in the fire station over there, so I don't know. Okay. I'm just going by hearsay, so I can't say if it is or not, but I've heard that. And probably because of the kind of facility it is, you're not going to be able to go in there and, and do an no. investigation. No. Probably. Not at a firehouse. No. no. Which would be cool. Yeah, it would be. But the command post there, which has got the little museum and the yes. little restaurant and stuff, is there a lot of activity there? Uh, amazingly enough, yes, there is. Um, now, Kathy Kressel from Haunted Rockford, you guys know Kathy, uh, she puts on events at uh, the command post, and it seems like every time that she does an event there, they get some activity. So that's kind of how we got introduced to the command post. We went to one of Kathy's uh, events there to help her out, and lo and behold, we're documenting paranormal activity. So um, the owner of the command post graciously asked us to come back without a big group, just our team, and see what we could catch. And we caught quite a bit of stuff. What kind of stuff did you catch? Um, the K2 meter, that is basically a little meter that uh, it's a it's a different EMF meter, but it, it measures electro, ugh, electromagnetic uh energy in the air we had a 45 minute session where something was manipulating it to yes and no questions um we did have some ghost box stuff out there uh and that's the machine that kind of 
the kit picks up the voices and stuff, right? The ghost box, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, we had a few answers out there. But the time that we were out there with the team for Expedition Entity, it seemed to be mostly confined into one room. And that's kind of the the middle room in the command post where the big flag on the wall says Camp Grant and everybody signed their names on it. Wow. So for some reason, now the first time I was there, not so much. But when we investigated for Expedition Entity, it was all confined to that room for the most part. And I, I don't know why, because people have seen shadow play throughout the whole location. Um, we actually saw something peer in at us from the outside window, but when that kind of stuff happens, that could have been some guy walking by and I'm, I'm not going to call it paranormal. Right. So. It was, it was something, but you know, it was something, but it could have been just as human as you and I. So I don't know. Right. I'm talking to Dan Norvell from uh, the ghost hunter, Dan Norvell project. We're talking camp Grant. And some of the things that he has uh, found there while he's going. Is there certain times of the day or night or week or anything that works better than others? Or is it could be any time? To my experience, um, in the 10 years that we've been doing this as a structured team, we've caught just as much in daylight as we have at night. Um, the reason that most teams go out at night is because the world's asleep at night. Right. So you don't have you know, as much traffic, you don't have as much air traffic, you don't have as much, you know, uh, people walking up on you, what are you guys doing? Um, but the other side of that is, and we kind of talked about the equipment thing last week. Right. And how great our voice recorders are. Uh, we've also caught many, many hours of crickets. Okay. You know, so if there were any voices that we were to catch, you know, crickets are active at night, and I have a lot of audio to prove that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but as far as paranormal activity goes, no day of the week, uh, no time of day or night. They always seem to be active. Um, more active in the winter months, to my experience around here. I've caught a lot more in the winter than I have in the summer, but I've See, caught quite a bit in the summer, too. So ghosts don't mind the, and spirits don't mind the, the cold weather, then? No, I don't think they get cold like we do. No, I don't think so, either. <laughs> and and there's some connections with Camp Grant and some other places. We'll talk about that here in a couple of minutes. How's sure. that sound? Absolutely. Talking to Dan Norvell, the Ghost Hunter Dan Norvell Project. We're talking Camp Grant, and there's some cool connections to some other locations in Rockford we'll talk about here in just a bit. I'm talking ghosts with the Ghost Hunter, the Dan Norvell Project. Dan's joining me this morning. We're talking Camp Grant over by the uh, Rockford Airport, the Chicago Rockford International Airport. I should say yes. it correctly, shouldn't I? Yes. It's got a, a big name over there. As as that airport expands, it, it, does it affect the, the activity in that area? Well, in a house, construction seems to kick up activity. Okay. And one of the thoughts behind that is that the spirit or ghost is seeing the house as it did when, well... I don't want to say it. They did when they lived there. Okay. So when you go and put up a wall mm -hmm. somewhere else or tear out a wall or something, their they're feeling is, why are you messing with my house? Right. And uh, that seems to kick up activity anytime you work on something. So with all the construction and stuff out there, I would say there's a definite possibility. You know, yeah, because I, I, think, I think of it as like, okay, you have an area that's kind of like a wooded area mm -hmm. and you have animals. And right. you start building, well, the animals got to go somewhere. Well, then they start coming into, you know, into the city and stuff. Right. Now we've got, you know, deer and fox and coyotes and all this coming. In, everywhere. In everywhere. So that's what I was thinking. I'm like, you're doing all this building and, and add additions over there at the airport. Well, then, you know, the spirits, they, they need to go somewhere. Well, one of the thought processes is uh, there was a uh, an old roadway over in Rome. And a gentleman had taken a video of these Roman soldiers walking by. Uh, the problem is, is that he could only see them from the knees up. Okay. And they all seem to be much lower than him. Well, after he did some research, the old roadway that went through that particular part of Rome used to lay about 
two feet under where the present roadway was. Wow. So those ghost soldiers that he recorded were walking their roadway back where they were. But when he recorded it, he's recording out, you know, from the knees up because there's a roadway at their knees. Right. So, you know, um, even with the airport, you know, if there's mm-hmm. some World War One soldiers out there or, you know, a residual haunt of some sort, uh, it's going to play out the way it's going to play out, whether they build a building there or not. Wow. See, that's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. I never thought of it like that. So there is some connections between Camp Grant and some of the other locations in Rockford that are known for paranormal activity. Now, many teams, um, our team hasn't experienced it, but uh, some of the ghosts from the Vets vets Hall tend to bounce between Camp Grant and the Vets Hall because uh, there's a a couple soldiers in common. Okay. Okay. like I said, our team hasn't experienced it, but uh, some of the people that I do know and trust have, so I have no reason to doubt them. Uh, Tinker Swiss Cottage has a tie to Camp Grant because uh, the tracks behind Tinker, where the garden used to be, those twenty to 30,000 soldiers that I was telling you about that died, they brought them and laid them out at the grounds of Tinker because that was the closest train to, to ship those men back home to their families to, for burial. Okay. Wow, that's interesting that mm-hmm. they can, that spirits can travel like that. I never thought. I thought, you know, they were stuck in one spot. Yeah, I, and and some are and some aren't. Huh. So it's, it's just kind of a catch-22 for some of them, and others are free to go wherever they want. I'm talking to Ghost Hunter Dan Norvell. So if somebody has a house, they live in a house, and it's been known to have some... Uh, spiritual activity in it or all of a sudden they start kind of hearing things and some feeling some strange things what are some some things they can do just on their own to see if it's you know their imagination or if there's something really going on uh like larry brought up last week uh we all own smartphones Mm -hmm. and you know you could run the voice recorder on a smartphone or set it up and run video if you really want to. Some people don't want to because they don't want to know what they don't want to. What's in my house? I would say paying rent. Right. (laughs) Yeah. If you're going to haunt this place, at least give us money. Um, (laughs) I would say logically though, I would try to figure out what it could be, you know, a loose pipe, uh, you know, a water softener going bad that when your water cycles through the, you know, your water, does that change thing? Mm-hmm. Some houses do. Mine doesn't because it's old. But um, if your water softener is going through the, the change cycle, you know, just different things like that. I would try to, you know, rule out loose pipes, everything, maybe a loose fixture, anything and everything that I could before I'd start thinking of hauntings. Now, one of the other things about my team is if somebody is experiencing haunting, and it's a livable situation, you may not want to have my team bring all this equipment in because if it was livable livable before, I don't want to go in there and tick it off because guess what? <laughs> At midnight, I'm leaving. Right. And now you still have to deal with it. Okay. So sometimes uh, maintaining the status quo is the way to go. Right. And I've, and I've told numerous potential clients that, you know, if I come in there, I'm not going to guarantee, you know, because you can't make them leave. Right. You can either make them accept that, you know, this is now my house and you're welcome to be here as long as you respect parameters and we'll respect yours, or it just gets real bad. Right. Why can't we all just get along? Absolutely. (laughs) I'll make a snack. Feel free. (laughs) (laughs) You can raid the refrigerator anytime. Do you guys have any events or anything coming up anytime soon? Um, we do, we are going to do a, uh, a live ghost hunt on Halloween, uh, that'll start around eight, eight thirty in my hometown of Kirkland and Maple Cemetery. Um, I will be there. Uh, Larry and Tessa will try to be there uh, as well as the other team. And something that I need to mention right now that I forgot to, because, you know, I was not thinking about it is, uh, there's more to our team than just me and Larry. There's Tessa, who's our sensitive, uh, 
Andrew Helton, who is our photographer slash other camera guy. Uh, Steve Wren, who's been with us, God, since we pretty much started, um, who does anything and everything, and then Gary Roach. So not just Larry and I, but there's four other people that are just as important to this team as we are. So I forgot to mention them last week, so I <laughs> thought I'd better get that in here. I understand. Well, you'll be back next Tuesday with another location. Absolutely. Let us know what's going on. We're doing it for Halloween, finding out the, the good ghost places in the Rockford area. Dan Durrell, thank you so much for joining me this morning. You're welcome.